Hello there future adventurer and builder and welcome to a beautiful new world of Dvaros. My name is Peter Philosoph and during the next few minutes I'm going to show you your new sandbox and talk about all the cool things you can explore and construct in it from the 28th of February. This in the game is developed and will be published by Lithic Entertainment Incorporated. But I have to thank for this opportunity to introduce you to this game ahead of its release date. Let me first give you a brief description of the game before I go more in depth about its world, lore, game mechanics and characters. Varos is a peaceful 3D person adventure and town building game in which you gather resources, build settlements, solve puzzles, find treasure, explore and quest in a beautifully handcrafted world. You do all these things by playing as three uniquely skilled characters from the royal company of colonizers. These are the dwarf named Vilben, Horib the Halfling and Gloria of the Gnome people. As you play, you will meet other strange and quirky characters, invite the wandering wood elves people to join your town and befriend cute animals who will help you boost your town and character abilities. As I mentioned, gameplay is a mix of town building and adventure in third person which to me is a really cool feature because on countless previous occasions while playing my favorite town or city building games I wanted to take a walk or a drive down on the ground level and marvel at my creations from the perspective of their inhabitants. In Varos this is exactly what you can do because you build the town in the standard overhead bird's eye view but explore it and the surrounding area in a third person perspective over the shoulder of one of the three playable characters. Now let me dive into the lore of Dvaros and the reasons why you're building the settlement. This story starts in a far off land where the kind and peaceful wood elves suffered a great flood which made them homeless and refugees in the neighboring commonwealth which is ruled by a queen named Solatia. To help the wood elves and find them a new home, she got a far off people whose lands are both large and ancient to agree on letting the wood elves settle in their domain. These Archeons have allowed the Wood Elves to settle in a place called Duskened Woodlands where they would find plenty of resources, animal and plant life, as well as treasures to help them build a new society. There is already a failed settlement attempt still standing there in a valley called Duskened Vale. There the Wood Elves began to set up a base of operations and they await the arrival of an expert team from the Royal Company of Colonizers to assist them in the start of their new civilization. The Royal Company of Colonizers is an elite group of experts who have specialized skill sets for colonization and growth of the Commonwealth. In their organization, there is a particularly interesting trio made up of a dwarf, a halfling, and a gnome, and they were given this mission as their newest task. These three experts always insist on working together because they believe that their differences make them a stronger team. Traveling the world in the service of good helping to build infrastructure and stabilize developing towns and economies, Vilben, Horib and Goloya dedicate their lives to the casual heroics of ingenuity and resourcefulness. Managing your settlement is an important aspect of Dveros and the gameplay is loaded with small details. For example, when starting a new game, you have the opportunity to choose a name for your town. The land for the new settlement is limited and because of that you have to be very strategic in using this space to build structures that will maintain your town and unlock new abilities. Zooming all the way in or even walking along the streets will give you a good view of just how well you have combined the structures and where can you change an orientation or a placement of a particular building to get the most use out of it. As space is always a premium and you cannot just expand outwards and ruin the surrounding nature. This is something that people on this earth should have realized a long time ago. I see this game and some of its mechanics as the developer's commentary on our current struggles on this planet with overpopulation, pollution, deforestation and other man-made environmental disasters. If we remain on this course, we might one day find ourselves as the Wood Elf refugees in this game, but we won't have a helpful commonwealth or inviting Archeons to run to for help. But as this is a game preview and not a commentary on human economy and development, let me tell you more about some of the game buildings and connected game mechanics. For example, you can build markets to better the economy and add to your town's capacity. You can build houses to increase the population capacity and add farms to your town which will help you feed and maintain your population, while placing down recreational and entertainment structures will keep your townsfolk happy and more productive. Upgrades are available as well, so better houses will support more wood elves while taking up less space and improving the living conditions. All of this will cost resources of course, of which there are three kinds, wood, stone and gold, whilst there are two types of currency, 
crowns and soul quartz. These can be obtained by the dwarf with his wood axe and mining pick or by any other character if they search for a geocache. Gold can also be found on treasure hunts using the halfling. Your townsfolk get jobs in the buildings you provide them with, but their productivity is affected by their happiness. This is where those recreational entertainment structures come and help you to manage these mechanics. To increase the population of the town, the player needs to find more wood elves. They are usually found camping in the woods, in groups of up to 8 wood elves, and they can be asked to move into your town. If there are not enough homes for all the wood elves to live, they will refuse to join but can be asked again when more housing is made available. These townsfolk also have needs that must be met for them to be happy. These various needs are influenced by their current activity and the quality of the structure that activity is taking place in. There are the energy, comfort, hunger, fun and the mentioned happiness. Townsfolk happiness is measured by an average of their needs. A citizen can be happy, neutral or unhappy depending on which threshold the averages of these needs have crossed. This happiness influences productivity directly, so if a citizen is unhappy for a while, there is a chance they will permanently leave the town. When townsfolk are working, the levels of their needs and their happiness influence just how productive they are, which then influences how much food or currency is earned. Workers with low productivity will produce far less than workers at maximum productivity. While this might all sound simple enough, and what you're used to from similar games, getting this balance right can be very problematic, especially with high population or if you do not pay attention to the amount of resources you're spending. Again, you can draw a parallel line with our own lives and it is probably why so many players, me included, enjoy this kind of gameplay experience no matter if they are managing wood elves in a far off land or space androids in the far corners of the universe. The gameplay has a ubiquitous attractiveness for everyone with a soft spot for research management and building. So far I have talked about the world, the lore and the gameplay, and now I want to tell you more about the characters, specifically the three playable characters in this game. Each of them have six stats. These are the agility, which increases the tool swing speed of a character, stamina, the energy used for sprinting, run speed, the maximum speed that the character can run without sprinting, luck, which improves chances of good things happening to them, like jackpots for example, and eyesight, which is a really rarely seen stat in games, and here it shows the distance that wildlife can be detected on the map. There is one additional stat that is called Trainer Level, which is the current pet training level that is shared across all three characters. To boost these stats, you can find badges, which grant additional bonuses to stats and allow for usage of special tools and abilities. Pets will grant increases to these badges, befriending them requires players to play a type of a turn-based minigame, where both the player and the animal can take an action once their turn timer is near the end. Now I know I just mentioned a bunch of new things that I haven't explained, like jackpots, wildlife pets, minigames, puzzles and so on. But as this is a preview, I do not wish to go into the micro details about the game, and I want to leave some things for you to find out and enjoy while you are discovering their uses and mechanics. So going back to the subject of characters, I have already mentioned the dwarf named Dwilben, Harbert the Halfling and Gloria of the Gnome People. She is a builder by trade, and her skills are building and repairs, designing blueprints and defense. Here again you can hear some new game concepts and mechanics, but I will once again just mention them without going more in depth, because that would make this preview quite a bit longer than planned. If you do end up liking this video and this game, click the like button, leave me a comment about what part of the game would you like to see more and hear more about, and subscribe if you want to be notified when I post a video about it. Gloria is a scrappy and resourceful engineer and architect, whose role in the mission is to assist the wood elves by designing and building the town structures. Belonging to the race of gnomes, Gloria grew up learning the ways of the mechanic and the builder. When she came of age, she took her training to the next level by becoming an apprentice to the world-renowned master architect Sir Swank Elbright. She is now employed by the Royal Company of Colonizers as a master architect herself. For her to be able to build and expand the town, Dwibblem the Gatherer has to do a lot of legwork and swing his mighty axe and his pike all day long. His skills are woodcutting, mining and demolition. He cuts down trees to collect the wood resource, mines gold and stone and is able to carry large explosives to open up blocked or hidden passageways. And just as a side note, he is also 400 years old. Dwilben is a legend in his own lands as children are told the story of a red beard, a miner and a lumberjack who loved his work so much that when he had built himself a home, 
and mined enough gold to keep him wealthy for the rest of his days, he found himself unfulfilled, so he continued to mine and lumber and left stockpiles of wood and stone wherever he went. Each time that was enough for a small family to settle on the land, and so he began to live prosperity and development in his path. He was only 42 years old, a child himself in the eyes of his fellow dwarves. Some centuries later, he became one of the founding members of the Royal Company of Colonizers. While Glolia and Wilbon do the more day-to-day -day work, which doesn't sound very exhilarating, the halfling Horbeard Explorer does enough adventuring for all three of them, and then some. Naturally, his skills are detecting hidden treasures, quickly traveling by sprinting, and skillfully climbing walls to get to those hidden locations in search of loot. Horbeard's role in the mission is to assist the wood elves in exploring the new land and finding hidden treasures to help finance the rebuilding of their civilization. He grew up in a peaceful farming village where he longed to see the world and travel. At the age of 15, he ventured to a smoky industrial city called the Rakit, where the adventurous troublemaker began thieving for a living. To the rich, he was known as the mysterious thief Softfit. To the poor, he was known as Horbeer the Kind for his generosity. Throughout his exploits, he began to foster an appreciation for the fine artworks and artifacts. And so he left the city and joined faraway archaeological expeditions. There, he exceeded and flourished and he became famous for his finds. The common people loved their Horbeer and there was an outrage over his arrest. The queen herself attended his trial and asked that rather than go to prison, that he serve his sentence in the service of those in need. The jury ruled that he would travel with the Royal Company of Colonizers to assist the team in exploring an artifact identification. After his sentence was served, Horbeer decided to stay on with the company, he turned his talents for good rather than personal gain. There is a good reason why I am telling you all these stories in full, and I think you can figure out my reasoning as this last one was the most transparent. I rarely get a chance to play and show off games which are designed in a plain, uplifting spirit and I really value the work done by the developers at Lytic Entertainment. They are a small independent game studios with a mission to create games and experiences that are unique and engaging. Their motto states, we believe that if a game is crafted with love, then there will be somebody to love it. That's why we only strive to make games that we would want to play. For me, this is a perfect way of approaching game development and I can only salute them for this, while giving them my full support in the form of this and other videos. There is even more that I would like to tell and show you about this game, like small facts and tips, for example that the default key to hide the UI is Z and then you can make beautiful screenshots. Also other useful advice, like that your first storage upgrade comes from a character called Suvera Runip, who needs the player's help at one point. But I think I have already gone beyond the scope of this preview, which just goes to show you how inspiring games can be when they find their target audience. If you like this game and what you have seen so far, remember to wishlist it on Steam as it will be coming out on the 28th of February. I would like to thank you for watching this video and invite you to stay on for more videos or watch one of my other previews, let's plays or introduction videos. Have a good day and happy gaming!